Heavenly Father, we thank you for complications because we get to praise you even more when they're settled. And so we, we ask that thy word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen. So continue to bless this word of grace upon us, this word from above. The Torah always pre-existed because the to- Jesus is even the Torah, better than the Torah. So bless this word and may it find fruit to all of eternity in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. First Chronicles 17. All right, now we've been talking today. We're going to talk um, more about the Grace Awakening. So everybody find First Chronicles 17. Did you get it? Now, if you go all the way down to verse number 22 and 23. If you want to see a kissing cousin chapter, please read 2 Samuel 7.14. Uh, so if you want to uh, compare notes, this is a parallel verse. Remember in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we have similar Bible stories. Oh, and some of them have different details. And so here is a Chronicles repeats what's... Um, some information in the book of first and second Shmuel Samuel. So let's look at uh, verse number 23 um, again, 22 and 23 and 24. And we're going to go all the way down to the end of complete the whole chapter. We studied first uh, Chronicles 17 on finding w- when grace became incarnate. And now, O Lord, let the word which thou hast spoken, thy servant in concerning his house, be established forever. Everybody box in there. That's Mary's. Do whatever he tells you. Do you remember in John 2, 5? So everybody put in there, John 2, 5. Now, so when Mary said, do whatever he tells you, it's even more powerful of a expression than when we studied John chapter two by itself. What Mary is saying that, and I I told you this before, all grace explodes in your life through the incarnation. Because as I told you before, in Titus chapter two, verse 11, the word for for grace is Jesus. He He is filled with grace. He is the grace awakening. And so what happens then is when grace comes into our lives, it's Jesus Christ who is in our life. So when Mary is saying in John 2 and 5, do whatever he tells you, she is saying to you, plug into the incarnation because the angel said to me, hail, full of grace. Now, just for your information, in Luke 1, 26, Mary's name was not pronounced. So powerful is grace inside of you that if you seem nameless before the named one, because it's about his name that you live your life. So Mary is a hail favored the you have been always filled with grace in the greek in luke 1 26 and 27 so here comes our grace explosion upon us so this is a marvelous truth about saving grace when you pray and we've been talking about lining the holy spirit everybody got the equation remember the equation the word The spirit equals creative power. And the creative power means exceedingly abundant life, exceedingly abundant. And I give you a a cross reference on that. That cross reference on it is Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. When you have grace, There is always, you can never get 
enough grace, it's always given to you more than you can imagine. And that's proof because when Jesus, when you ask in prayer, because you are grace men and women, correct? You can never, 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 never get just what you want. You always get more than you asked for. So because of our Father and because of grace, you get an exceedingly abundant. When you're plugged into grace, you immediately enter into the incarnation. You enter into the incarnation. That's an amazing factoid going right into the very power of the incarnation. So when you're in the power of the incarnation, you have more than you can ever imagine. You broke the mold, so to speak, with that one. All right, back with me, please, to First Chronicles 17, 23. Just really kind of building on that fact as we left. Verse 24, as thy name will be established and magnified. See Mary beginning her magnificat right there? My soul what? Magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in, in the what? In, in the Lord. Now, so magnificent was this magnificence of grace because Mary is filled with grace. Are you getting this? And she knew about it. And when you're filled with grace, guess what she did? And I love what Mary did. She had to name the Holy Spirit. And she called the Holy Spirit Gadosh. Q A. D-O-S-H. Everybody say Gadosh. She had to name the Holy Spirit Gadosh. Now, if she, she, she stopped there, but I went, I believe she went even further. Remember, three Gadoshes from Isaiah 6 is the power and the majesty of the fullest explanation we could give on earth. So Mary looks upon the Holy Spirit for this uh, grace awakening and says, Gadosh, Gadosh, and Gadosh. This forms what is called the Gadoshim. Q-A-D-O-S-H-I-M. Everybody say Gadoshim. When you, when you do the Gadoshim that Mary did, when you enter into the Gadoshim, you're entering into the very majesty in front of God's heaven. You are in the heavenly cohorts. When you walk in grace, you walk in heaven. You are in heaven. How many wanna be in heaven tonight? You're already there. All right, tell yourself, I'm already there. You already are into the heavenly cohorts. Now, I want to give you some more teaching on getting into the heavenly, heavenly court so that your life can be changed, transfigured, and, and transmitted to the glory of God. When you're being transmitted, then all of a sudden, the power of God is being unbelievably released upon your life. But the problem is you grew up without knowing that. First Chronicles 17, 24. Thy name will be established. I told you Zephaniah chapter three. Zephaniah 3, 17, that his name be praised. And in Zephaniah 3, 17, I told you this before, is the power of the um, it is it's the Annunciation prefigured, the prefigured Annunciation. Annunciation is the announcement. Verse twenty four, First Chronicles seventeen twenty four. The Lord of Hosts, the Lord of Israel, is Israel's God. 
Now, here is when you enter into grace and have this grace awakening, an amazing thing begins to happen. You really begin for the first time to know who God really is. I really want to know who God really is. And so that's why we say in church on Sundays, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the bright morning star. And the house of thy servant David will be established before thee. So we have a supernaturally God in our midst building a house. And it's a house of grace. When you go to heaven one day, you're going to live on grace lane. Your, your whole place is filled with grace. Verse 25. For thou, my God, has revealed to thy servant that will build a house for him. So how do I pray? I don't know how to pray. Here's my prayer. Build me a house. Here's your prayer. May I live in my house with you. Lord, not my hands, but your hands. Be taken over to build the house. Build me a house, Lord. Build me a house. When that's established, you will know how to pray as you ought. For thou, my God, has revealed to thy servant that will build a house for him. Before thy servant has found courage. Ah, see it right there? The courage to pray. I need to pray before thee. Verse 26, and now, O Lord our God, you are God, and thou hast promised good things to thy servant. There's the exceedingly abundance again. We get everything we need in grace. If you have grace, you have it all. Just give me a life filled with grace, grace, and grace. There was a Roman Catholic sister who was tortured to death recently. And the last words on her lips was, Father, forgive them. So sister had grace, grace, and grace. When St. Stephen died in Acts, the end of Acts 6, uh, beginning of Acts 7, he died with grace, grace, grace. And now, O Lord, verse 26, thou art God and thou hast promised good things to thy servant. We get everything. When you have grace, it's all good. How many ever said, all good? All good. It's all good. Amen. How many want a life that's all good? Just desire to be and check out your life. Are you in grace? Grace. Grace. Now, therefore, may it please thee to bless the house of thy servant. Now, remember David's house at this point was right next door to the first temple that I may continue forever before thee. So remember, grace is never, never ending. And what for you, O Lord, have blessed is blessed forever. So when God says it's blessed, it's blessed. Uh, I want to show you a great parallel. How many, when Pilate wrote on it, the, uh, the, the names... On the cross, how many languages? Three, John 19. What did, what did um, Pilate say? You, they, they said, you should have wrote in there, he, he thought he was the king of kings. And what did Pilate finally do? Got a little backbone and he says, what I have written, I have written. You see the connection? What is blessed is blessed. So if you write in there, John 19, Pilate's words at Calvary. Now, I, I want to give us kind of a rare treat. I ask you to keep in mind, we've finished the whole chapter now. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Now, when we look at Psalm 33, 6, remember Psalm 33, 6, you should have that word plus spirit equal creative power. 
if you go with me very quickly to Luke 1, and then I want to draw some connections when you have the power of the Holy Spirit in you. I want to show you the importance of three o'clock in the morning. I'm going to say something to you that's outrageous in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go with me to Luke 1, 31. This is the greatest single miracle ever for a person. The greatest single miracle of a person. Now, this is total grace from above. Now, Mary was already filled with grace, wasn't she? Now, this is the total, total greatest miracle that could happen from above. Amen. No one had this except one person. Verse number 31. Behold, remember there's the chene. You will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you shall name him Jesus. Okay? Now, the power of conception is the power of God giving light force to Mary. Mary already was in life force. Now Mary's going into light force. Are you getting that? Now, so Mary enters into light force. Now, why is that important to enter into light force? When you're in the Holy Spirit and you're into light force, you can see now, when we all go to heaven one day, we are going to say, God, in my light that you give me, I see light. Now, in verse 37, in verse 37 of Luke 1, 37, when you're in the spirit of grace, you're going to super abound. Now, he will be great, verse 32. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Yaakov forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said, how shall this be since I have no husband? But Mary said, there is a show me. And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. All right, everybody put in there. They get married. They're getting married right there. Okay, everybody put that there. The marriage between Mary and the Holy Spirit, she gets a spouse, okay? So everybody put in there the marriage. The, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And that's the first Ark of the Covenant was overshadowed. Mary comes. When you get married, you, you have the very power of your spouse coming into you. Do you remember that? When you get married, you have the very power of your spouse coming into you. Now, Mary is already, already having grace. But now Mary is coming to the point where it's, it's more grace. Remember, you can't ever, it's the exceeding. So when you live in grace, you're living in exceeding. Now, next, when you live in exceeding, you have to live, and this is where I want to come and get all of you right now. When you live in exceeding, you live in the what? You live in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Do you all experience that? My annoyance is not at you. My annoyance is you should have known this. My annoyance is that you don't see as many things happening as I want you to see. That's my annoyance. Am I annoyed at you? No, no. It's, it's trying to get us to understand what the exceedingly abundance is. When you're exceedingly abundant, you wouldn't be suffering as much as you are. Agreed that there is a suffering tone to all to our lives, but it should not be a time where we don't know what to do. Remember, did you look up St. Vincent Lorenz? Yep, Vincent, 
he says, late have I learned this because he was enjoying the exceedingly abundant life in the Holy Spirit. Now, did you notice you can get an exciting moment to be baptized in the Spirit? But how many know it seemingly wears off? Do you want to wear off? No. So you, you, you um, got to go into the exceedingly, exceedingly. All right, everybody talk to yourself. I need to go into the exceedingly. In verse 37 then, well, at Luke chapter one, for with God, nothing will be impossible. Now see that line, verse 37? The, the Greek doesn't say that. Do you know what the Greek says? Here's the Greek, is my normal life is living in the impossible. The possibilities I have are living in the impossibilities. How many like that? Do you see a difference? Mary now says that without God, I'm without power. With God, I am filled with power, the power of the Holy Spirit. When Mary gets the word, see what she said there in verse 38. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Here's what the word means. The word means the power of all fulfillment in your life. The power of all your dreams being filled. How many would like to see all your dreams and desires come true? So that's the exceedingly abundance. It's incredible what will happen when we walk and live in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. That is your destiny. Now, I want to show you something. Um, the greatest miracle in human experience is right now. It's Mary praying on the level. Ready? This is Mary praying on the, the total level of the Holy Spirit. This is Mary praying on the level of the total Holy Spirit as much as a person can do. How many would like to have that grace to pray in the total experience of the Holy Spirit inside of you, the total experience? And Mary always, always lived in that experience. I'm going to take you to a Bible verse, which you quoted about one million times, but maybe for the first time, you'll get it explained to you uh, with the proper Greek and everything else when you, when you hear what things mean. So I just wanted to tell you that about Mary and Mary receiving her grace, Mary staying in the grace. And then after this next thing I, I want to show you, brothers and sisters, is I want to show you how to pray uh, to hear God's voice in grace the hearing of God's voice through the grace, okay? So now, how many know that God wants to communicate to all of you? Here's our problem. Our problem is we've been too noisy. So that's why God's gonna have to come to you at three o'clock in the morning. So you're going to see a power of the spirit. Everybody go with me to Matthew 18. Matthew 18, 19, and 20. I know you know this. I know you read it a thousand times, but we're going to enter into the Greek. So when we enter into the Greek, what happens, you can see it a whole lot better uh, because you get daily service preaching, but we need meat and potatoes. Matthew 18, 19, and 20. I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything, they ask, it will be done to them by my father in heaven. 
Now, if you're like me, I said, that sounds great. Let's do it. And if you're like me, you say, well, nothing happened. How many have that experience? You did that, but nothing happened. All right, let me give you the Greek and maybe this can help you to have it happen for you. Amen. Now, the Greek means, the Greek means right there, I'm, I'm looking at verse 19. I'm, I'm going to give you the Greek. This is called exegesis, by the way. The Greek says there, having been led together, having been led together, pray in a symphony. Having been led together, pray in a symphony. Now, let me give you the word for symphony in Greek. Now, you're led together by the Spirit in, in Romans 8.14. When we have working in the Spirit and grace operative, the word in Greek for agree is symphonai. S U M P H O N A I. You got that? See the word symphony in there? Here's what you do with one another. When you have a person in need of prayer and you say, let's agree to pray. I want you to do something you're not accustomed to doing. I want you to pray out loud more with people than you ever have before. Now, here's what it means. I'll break this down for you in a couple points so you can see how to pray like Mary, how to pray in the Holy Spirit. The symphony, S-U-M-P-H-O-N-A-I, symphony is not intellectual. It is not mental. It means I got to come to perfect harmony with you. For example, how many ever prayed for something and your, your mind was a thousand miles away? When you come to two to three, it means I have to be in harmony with you. That means if I'm going to pray for your prayer request or you for mine, you have to be focused only on that. This is called getting your score right. S-C-O-R-E. Let, let me give you a visual. How many have ever seen somebody playing an instrument and they got the music in front of them on those sheets? Or how many seen a person ready to sing a song and they got the words and the notes right there in front of them? When I pray in the Holy Spirit with you, let's break it down with you. And this is how Mary prayed. you got to get your score together. So when you're in grace like Mary was, it was so incredible that Mary had her score totally in harmony with the Holy Spirit. How many would like to pull that one off? When you sing in the Holy Spirit and you got your score together, you can loose and bind anything that you think you can imagine. Now, I want to break this down for you to make it simpler for you. When the two became one, when you get married, this is what that means. The problem with the two becoming one, you have to have the score right with the person you're married. Now, how many think I would marry this beautiful woman and get her right with me like that? So the score has to be right. Number one, if you want to pray like this, which Mary did, you must have the musical score, S-C-O-R-E. Now, what is the musical score? The musical score 
is God's revealed word to us. Now, let me repeat. See if you can get this. What's having the score of the Holy Spirit in you? What's having the score that Mary could join with all these people around her? When you have the Holy Spirit with you, you come together, the two become one in the word of God. It's the revealed word of God. Then the harmony of your spirits come together. When the harmony of your spirits come together, God is there powerfully and he wants to grant you that prayer request. When he grants you that prayer request, number two, did you get number one? The music score. When you have this available, the conductor of the music and the, the conductor is the Holy Spirit. This is how, what it says in 1 Peter 3, 7, that if you're married and you're not doing this properly because you don't join your spouse into your prayer life properly. You know why it's dangerous to get married? You have to draw them in to the very depth of your prayer. You have to, do, the two become one. Draw them into the depths of the prayer. Then you can make beautiful music together. Now, do you understand what the two become one is? So you're getting a teaching on marriage. You're getting a teaching on prayer. You're getting a teaching on couples being together. Now, guess what? I would never let you got married until you do the two become one that you know how to pray together, amen? How many know, I know what you're saying. Father Bill, if you did that, nobody would be married today. Your men folk, guess what? They don't get it. Now, if you try to explain this to, tonight to them, they'll say, forget about it. I'll, I'll wait till April when the Yankees start again. Does everybody understand what it means to live the two become one. Now, what Mary did by getting her grace, that all began to happen to her. When you're in the power of the Holy Spirit, amazing things begin to take over in your life. All you sisters, you're the backbone of prayer. But guess what? It should have been your husband, the backbone of prayer. But, but you are the backbone of prayer. So I applaud you, sisters. And those who are single, you are blessed. When you have grace, the grace awakening, it's called, number one, to be a new harmony with the person you're praying with. How many have that absolute harmony? Number two. Praying in grace is very, very delicate. And, and didn't Mary show it? Mary is beauty that moves in the spirit. Mary is beauty that moves in the spirit. Now, you heard the, the Bible say it in the New Testament a million times. It means in the beginning of the letters, we have what is called grace and peace. The word grace is primarily a Greek word. And kari, C-H-A-R-I-S. In other words, you would see that mostly in Greek. But peace, shalom, is primarily a Jewish word. Isn't that interesting? What did the Holy Spirit do? Took the word grace and peace at the beginning of Bible letters. Is that interesting or what? Heavenly Father, we just pray for the mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit as we go into our perfect rest.
that that's coming upon each of us and then ultimately for life and ultimately for eternal rest. And eternal rest is going to be unbelievable. So bless this and teach us how to pray in harmony in the spirit with another person. And if we're in consecrated Mary vows to our spouses, because the two have become one. But now, Lord, do a miracle. Show us how to live that. Amen.